Hello everyone, Mrs. Hansen, and I'm excited to say this is the last video from chapter nine on acids and bases as we complete our note pack. Our remaining topics will include acidity and basicity of salts, as well as the performance of titrations in the next section. So remember in our last video, we had mentioned that an acid reacts with a base to neutralize forming a water molecule and a salt. Well, sometimes these salts can actually be acidic, basic, or even neutral, depending upon whether it's positive cation or the negative anion is der derived from the strong or the weak base. So let's dive into this. Let's say for a metal, and I'm going to use the abbreviation M for a metal, and we all know that metals are going to be positive ions. The metal comes from the base. So let's say, for example, HA plus MOH. This represents the generic formula for an acid. <clears throat> this will represent the generic formula for a base. We know that this is a double replacement. The H goes to OH and we form water. And the metal goes to the anion to form the salt. So you get MA. This is what we refer to as the salt. So you have a metal ion that came from the base and you have the anion that came from the acid. So just to think that through MOH, the M in the salt originally came from the base and the negative ion originally came from the acid, HA. So MA is our generic salt. That's all that that's saying. If we consider the salt and the original value of the, um, the base and the acid, if the base was a strong base, then the salt will be neutral. If the acid was from a strong acid, then the, then the uh, salt will be neutral. So let's remember what we said strong bases are. Remember the term strong means they 100% ionize in solution. We said that a strong base came from a first family metal, such as lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, cesium hydroxide. These are all examples of strong bases because the metal ion is a group 1A alkali metal. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base. Now let's think about this side, strong acids. We said that if we memorized the strong acids, we would also know all of the weak ones as well. Strong means 100% of those molecules dissociate and form ions, so they ionize in solution. We said HCl, HBr, and HI were all strong. Whoops, I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button. And then we said there was a diprotic acid, sulfuric, and the nitric acid. Let me say those words again. Hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, sulfuric, and nitric acid. These are the strong acids that we were told to memorize in an earlier lesson. So we need to know these, especially now that we're moving on into a salt uh, lesson. If the parent base is strong and the parent acid is strong, the salt will create a neutral solution. Neither ion will undergo hydrolysis, which means the hydrolysis just, we can say, reacts with water. However, what if in this example, we have a salt, sodium bicarbonate, Now look what happened. The parent base was sodium hydroxide. Of course, that's strong, no effect on pH. However, 
The negative ion bicarbonate, its parent acid is weak. The bicarbonate weak acid means that it will affect the pH. And here's how it does so. Bicarbonate, HCO3 negative, undergoes hydrolysis. And all that means is that it's a proton reaction where conjugate pairs form. Now let's see what, how that happens. When HCO3 negative and water undergo hydrolysis, a proton is transferred. It's going to form a basic solution such as this. The water is going to donate a proton to form the conjugate acid. These two are conjugates, leaving the solution slightly basic because hydroxide is formed in this reaction. When a proton transfers from the water, bicarbonate acted as a base, forming its conjugate acid, H2CO3. Water acted as the acid, forming its conjugate base, hydroxide. And you can see the solution will become basic because the production of hydroxide occurred in the water. When the parent acid is weak, the salt will produce a basic solution. No effect from the strong base, but from the weak acid, the pr process of hydrolysis made the solution basic. Now let's compare this scenario. Here is a salt called ammonium chloride. The parent base is ammonia, NH3, which is a weak base. The parent acid is HCl, so it's a strong acid. Remember, strong parents have no effect on pH, but weak parents do. And by parent, I mean what is it derived from? What acid and base is it derived from? A salt derived from a weak base and a strong acid forms an acidic solution. Let's show you how. Ammonia will undergo hydrolysis. And all that means is that we have a proton transfer in a Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reaction. So the proton transfer happens from water to the ammonia. What happens? Well, let me just clarify that. I want to make sure that I'm forming ammonia. So I need to just back up and repair that. I'm so sorry. You're going to have to erase, I'm sure. But it's the ammonium we started with. And I accidentally wrote ammonia. But that's what we're forming. So thank you for letting me fix that. Ammonium is the beginning ion. And we're going to undergo a proton transfer from the ammonium to water. So that means the conjugate base forms ammonia, see how I accidentally had that on the wrong side, and then water accepted the proton to become hydronium. So here, the proton was donated from ammonium and formed its conjugate base ammonia meaning that water acted as the base and accepted the proton, forming its conjugate acid. Now you can see why the solution is acidic, because there's hydronium ion in solution. When we have a weak base, when the parents for the salt when the salt has parents of a weak base, the solution will become acidic. The acidity and basicity of salt solutions. 
If the cation is derived from a strong base and a strong acid, you know that both parents are strong, no effect on pH from strong parents. And I'm just really wanting to emphasize, what do I mean by the term parent? The parent comes from the salt's original source of the acid and the base. So for instance, in our general letter, we said a salt could have a general formula of MA. This is a general formula for a salt. And so what is the parent base? The parent base would be the metal hydroxide. The parent acid would be hydrogen because acids always start with H, bases always end with OH. So here you have the parent acid, HA, the parent base, MOH. If parents are both strong, no effect on the pH. However, if a parent is weak, there is an effect on pH, there will be an effect on pH. And so, if the anion is from a weak acid, the solution will end up to be basic. And if the metal is apparent from a weak base, if the metal is coming from a weak parent, it creates a solution that will be acidic. Now, let's kind of make sure we understand this. This is my little trick. We have a salt, M-A. M stands for the parent base, and A would be the parent acid. Alrighty. Now, the way that I kind of memorize this and just helps me a little bit is thinking about the alphabetical order of the term acid and base. Acid is in first based on the alphabet before base. A comes before B in the alphabet. So what that means to me is if M, which is written first, comes from a parent that is weak, it's going to be acidic. M is written first, A is first in the alphabet, Therefore, I can remember it will be acidic. If A negative, who comes from the parent acid, is written second in the formula because it's negative, and B comes after A in the alphabet, I will remember that it's basic. It helps me to go alphabetical, acid, base. So let's take some examples. If you see NACL, K B R N A N O three. The parent base N A O H. The parent acid H C L. These are both strong, aren't they? The parents are both strong, therefore no effect. pH will come out to be exactly neutral. Here we have KOH, parent base, and HBr, the parent acid. Both of these are strong, so therefore the pH has no effect. The salt has no effect on the pH. The pH will be exactly 7. NaOH and HNO3, this is the parent base. It is strong. The parent acid is also one of our, our uh, strong acid. So this salt has no effect on pH. The salt will remain in solution as pH of 7.0. If the strong acid and strong base are the parents of the salts, then the salt has no effect on the pH. Let's consider another set of examples in the middle row there. It gives me some examples of NaHCO3. I'm gonna have to erase this, I need to
Let's consider the next call or the next row. We have NaHCO3, KCN, CaF2. That's strong. O3, that is a weak parent. HCO3 negatives, parent acid, H2O, H2CO3, is a weak acid. Remember my trick? The first position would be the A. The second position would be the B. Just think of the alphabet. A stands for acid. Its parent was strong, no effect. B stands for base. Its parent was weak. So this solution will be basic. The salt will hydrolyze and create a basic solution through the process of a proton transfer and Bronsted-Lowry conjugate pairs form. The solution ends up to be basic because the water will protonate, forming the conjugate acid, leaving the solution with a hydroxide ion. KCN, K, OH, well that's a strong parent base, no effect. HCN, oh that's a weak acid. So yes, this will affect the pH. It will do so by making it basic. The alphabet, A, B, A comes before B. If the first character comes from a weak parent, the solution is acidic. If the second character comes from a weak parent, the solution will be basic. This solution of KCN is slightly basic. Calcium hydroxide, the parent is strong. That is a soluble hydroxide compound. HF is the parent acid. This is a weak acid. Therefore, it will undergo hydrolysis, making the solution basic. And finally, let's talk about that last row where we have NH4Cl, NH4NO3. In this particular row, think about this, the acid base position. HCl is the parent acid. Ammonia is the parent base. HCl is a strong acid, therefore no effect. HNO3 is a strong acid, therefore no effect. But ammonia is weak, isn't it? And because it's in the first position, we know that the solution will be slightly acidic, and here's why. We just wrote this a moment ago. When ammonium undergoes hydrolysis, it goes back to form its conjugate base, making the solution acidic by generating the hydronium ion. Let's practice some. Let's give you some digestion time. Pause the video and see if you can determine whether these salts will make the water slightly acidic, basic, or leave it neutral. Take a moment and try these. Come back when ready to check. All right, well, let's see how you did, my friends. The first salt is NaF, sodium fluoride. The parent base, sodium hydroxide. We know that that is a strong base. It 100% dissociates when we place it into water. The parent acid is hydrofluoric acid. It is a weak parent. Therefore, since NaOH is strong, no effect on the pH. But HS is weak, and so yes, it will affect the pH of a solution. Remember our little memory trick, the alphabet. A comes before B. If the first guy is weak, we know it would be acidic. The second character here, F negative, is in the second position, so we know it would be basic. The solution would be basic. Here's the Y part. When F negative, is in solution with water, it undergoes hydrolysis, forming its conjugate acid and the base. HF is the conjugate acid. 
water forms its conjugate base, and you can see why now the solution would be slightly basic from the salt sodium fluoride. How about letter B? The salt is called potassium nitrate. The parent base, potassium hydroxide. This is a strong base. The parent acid is HNO3. It is a strong acid. Strong base, no effect. Strong acid, no effect. This salt would remain neutral in solution. How about letter C? This is called ammonium bromide. Ammonium bromide is a salt. Its parent base is ammonia. Its parent acid is hydrobromic acid. Ammonia is a weak base. HBr is a strong acid. Strong means no effect. Remember our little memory trick. A comes before B in the alphabet. The ammonium will make the solution slightly acidic. Here's the why. Ammonium, when in water, a proton will transfer, forming its conjugate base, leaving the solution slightly acidic. Ammonium transferred a proton to water, making the solution acidic. How did you do? Did you go on and try the next set as well? Are these going to be acidic, basic, or neutral when dissolved in water? If you've not yet tried them, pause the video. Come back only after you give yourself some think time. Letter A, K-I. The parent base is potassium hydroxide. You know that that is a strong base, so no effect. The parent acid is HI. It's also a strong acid, so no effect. That means that this solution will remain neutral. K2CO3, the parent base, potassium hydroxide. We know that is a strong base, so no effect. Here, the parent acid is carbonic acid, and we know that that is a weak acid. Therefore, yes, it will affect the pH of the solution. Here's our memory trick. A comes before B in the alphabet. This solution will be basic. The reason is carbonate will dissociate and release then that hydroxide ion. Carbonate, when in water, forms its conjugate pair HCO3 negative leaving the solution basic. I wanted to say that and write it so it made sense as why it's basic. How about letter C? Calcium nitrate. Calcium's parent base, calcium hydroxide. And yes, this is a strong base. And HNO3 is the parent acid. And yes, this is also a strong acid. That means no effect from either, it will remain neutral. Letter D, ammonium iodide. Parent base is ammonia, parent acid is hydroiodic acid. We know that hydroiodic is one of the strong that we're working to memorize, so no effect. Ammonia is a weak base, and so yes, this will affect, remember our memory trick, a comes before B in the alphabet, this solution will be acidic. Remember the why? Ammonium, when in water, will undergo hydrolysis, means just reacts with the water, forms its conjugate, leaving the solution acidic. Letter E, barium chloride. Barium hydroxide is a strong base, no effect. The acid HCl is a strong acid, no effect. Therefore, this will remain neutral. Now remember, truly the only thing you're going to know 
is ammonia. So if you see the first name, ammonium, notice that its parent base will be ammonia, and therefore, you'll know that it will be acidic. It's the only one that you'll need to memorize. Every other first name is going to give you a strong base. So when I saw ammonium, I knew that it was going to be acidic. Every other positive ion comes from a strong parent base. Where are we now? Barium chloride, I just did that one. And then sodium phosphate, Na3PO4, parent base, NaOH, well that's strong, so no effect. Parent acid, H3PO4, well, yep, that's a weak acid. Therefore, it will affect the pH. Here's our memory trick. A comes before B in the alphabet, so this solution will be basic. Great. In our next section, we're going to talk about titrations, an actual lab procedure for determining the concentration of an unknown acid or an unknown base by neutralization using an instrument known as a burette. To determine the concentration of an acid or a base in solution by concentration, I'm talking about the molarity unit. How many moles of solute per liter of solution? The process in the lab for determining the concentration of an acid in a base against a standard is known as a titration. If we want to know the concentration of an acid or the concentration of a base, we can measure how much acid or base was needed to neutralize the solution. Remember, to neutralize simply is defined as the number of moles of acid must equal the number of moles of base, and that's what's called the endpoint. When HCl is titrated against sodium hydroxide, we know that it's a double displacement formula, right? Na goes to Cl and H goes to OH. So when an acid is neutralized by a base, we form a water molecule, that's our driving force, the neutralization, and a salt. What we're saying is the point of being neutral is when we have an equivalent number of moles of acid to an equivalent number of moles of base. That is the end point of the titration. The solution is neutral. There's no excess or limiting reagent at the end point. They are in equal amounts. Acid moles equal base moles. We use an indicator typically called phenolphthalein. And in the lab, notice this instrument here is going to be called a burette. And it has a valve that you open and close that allows this solution in the burette to just drip out and end in this solution. The indicator is present to change color at the end point, and that typically is a solution of phenolphthalein. So in the burette, we have what's called a standard solution. The standard is known. We know the molarity, and what we're trying to solve for is the unknown molarity here. So you just count the drips, you know, you measure this, this uh, burette here has milliliters in it, and you're going to measure how many milliliters it takes to reach the end point. And from there, we're able to do a nice calculation to solve for the unknown molarity. So here it says, just kind of talk you through this titration problem. You have an HCl that's in the flask. We add an indicator. The indicator changes color at the end point. We filled the burette with NaOH solution. So inside of this long tube here is called the burette, and there is a standard solution of known molarity. So we're titrating HCl against NaOH. HCl is our unknown in this example, so therefore NaOH would be called the standard. 
It's what we know the concentration of. So at the end point, the number of hydrogen moles is equivalent to the number of hydroxide moles. That's what the end point indicates. By using the volume and molarity of NaOH and the known volume of HCl, we calculate the endpoint molarity. Remember that molarity, just think about our round little buddy, molarity is defined as moles per liter of solution. Molarity is moles per liter. So therefore, if I wanted to know moles, it's molarity times liter. So the number of moles of acid is equal to the number of moles of base at the end point. And we're going to rely on solution stoichiometry to solve for the molarity of the unknown acid. Step one in a stoichiometry problem, from the standard, we're going to take the molarity times liter, knowing that that gives us the number of moles of our standard. Step number two in any stoichiometry problem is the want over given stoichiometric ratio. Step two is your ratio, want over given from your balanced equation. And then in step three, we're gonna divide by the liters of acid to convert back to molarity. Three steps to stoichiometry, pulling back from our chapter three when we talked about molarity of acids. So molarity times volume, step one, gives us the moles. Step two, your ratio. Step three, divide by volume to find your molarity. Let's try some, shall we? What is the molarity of HCl being titrated against NaOH? And I really just, I wanna start out by emphasizing my first read through, I ignore all the numbers and I just try to pull out the chemistry. I can see the acid is HCl and I see it being neutralized by the base NaOH. And I just wanna know what's happening in terms of stoichiometry so that I can make sure I have a balanced equation. Notice that H is a plus one, Cl is a minus, this is plus and minus. So when we formed our products, every coefficient here comes out to be ones. So this is the balanced equation, all with stoichiometric ratios of one. That way I can kind of tabulate the information underneath everything. So I have 22.5 mLs of HCl, and I'd like to know its molarity. Underneath the base, we can keep track that we're using 25 mLs and its concentration was given as 0.1 molar. See what we have here? This is what we're given and this is what we want. So step one in our stoichiometric step one is given to moles always been our step one, isn't it? Now think about your round little buddy. Molarity is defined as moles per liter, big M, molarity. So if we want moles, see what we have to do? M times L. That's going to give us the number of moles. So I'm going to start by saying 0.1 molar NaOH times, and I have point, I have 25 milliliters, 0 0.025 liters. This is my step one, molarity times liter to give me the moles of given. Now here's my second step. Step two, we said, is a ratio. The heart of any good stoichiometry problem is your want over given stoichiometric ratio. Here it's really nice, we said it was one to one. For every one mole of HCl, we have one mole of sodium hydroxide. The heart of our problem, want over given mole ratio from the balanced equation. Now in step three, 
we want to divide by the volume of HCl so that we end up with moles per liter. 0.0225 liters of HCl. And that gives me moles per liter, which is the very definition of molarity. Step three, divide by the liters of want. And we want to know the HCl. So on my calculator, I would hit, whoops, I have to turn it on, 0.1 times 0.025. That's step one, times one over one. And then I'm gonna divide by 0 0.0225. And my screen reads 0 0.111 repeating. I'll put uh, three sig fig, so 0 0.111 molar HCl. Hey, we just did a solution stoichiometry problem. Now I'm going to let you in on a little secret here that I use. Maybe you'll like it as well. Instead of converting into liters, like I did in this story problem, you are allowed to keep them both in milliliters. And what you're actually getting is something called a millimole. Molarity times a milliliter gives you something called a millimole, which is just a fun word to say, isn't it? A millimole. And so then when you divide by milliliters over here, you could get millimole over milliliter and you still get big M. So as an alternate solution pathway, here's also a fine mechanism to get the correct answer. 0.1 molar times 25 milliliters and Here's your want over given ratio. The stoichiometric ratio from the balanced equation is just simply one over one in this example. It's not always one over one. And then in the last step, I'm gonna keep my 22.5 mLs in the ratio. So I used millimoles. And over here, you have a millimole per millimeter milliliter and you're going to get big M. Now hit that with me and just verify. 0.1 times 25 divided by 22.5 and you get the same answer, don't you? 0.111 repeating. So it's absolutely okay to leave milliliters in our solution stoichiometry problem on step one and in step three so that you have like units throughout. Should we try another? Acid rain and rainwater with a lower than normal pH caused by the presence of dissolved acids, such as sulfuric acid. Okay, nice to know. What is the molarity of sulfuric acid in rainwater if this many mils of a 0.2 molar NaOH are needed to titrate? So you hear what I'm saying? I kind of ignore all of the numbers first and I just want to find the chemistry. I want to be able to write the balanced equation. If I can't write the balanced equation, my stoichiometry is going to fall apart. I can see sulfuric acid, H2SO4, is going to be titrated against sodium hydroxide. Now remember, this is a double replacement reaction where the two positive ions exchange places. H goes to OH, Na goes to SO4. Now H, still a plus one, it's going to bond to hydroxide, still a minus one. That's HOH, that's water, isn't it? And the salt that forms is sodium, who's a plus one, with sulfate, who's a minus two. So Na2SO4. We're not yet balanced. To balance, we're gonna need some coefficients. Think about your T-chart as you balance this equation. You are balancing hydrogen, sulfate, sodium, and hydroxide on the left and on the right side of your equation. On the left side, there's two H's and one sulfate, one sodium, one hydroxide. On the right side, there's one H and one OH in a water molecule. 
There's two Na's and one sulfate in our salt, sodium sulfate. So I'm going to start by repairing the hydrogens first, just because they're written in the T-chart first. I'm going to do that by doubling the water. I'll repair my T-chart because not only did we double the H's, we doubled the OH's as well. Let's repair the sodiums next, and I'll do that by placing a 2 in front of the NaOH. Let's repair the T-chart. On the left side, we got two Na's and two OH's. So our balanced equation, that's the very first thing we have to do before any stoichiometry will fall into place. A 1 to 2 to 2 to 1 stoichiometric ratio. Now that I have that written, I can tabulate what's given to me under each of these ingredients. We'd like to know the molarity of H2SO4. If in rainwater, 5.22 mils of a 0.2 molar NaOH standard solution was needed to titrate 125 mils of the rainwater sample. So this is my given, the sodium hydroxide. This is what I want to solve for is sulfuric acid. So remember our steps, there's three steps to solution stoichiometry. Step one, we're going to multiply molarity times milliliter of what's given. And what we're doing there is coming out in a unit called a millimole, which is my new favorite word to say, a millimole. Step one, a 0.2 molar NaOH solution is going to be multiplied by 5.22 mils, and that converts me into a millimole, step one. Step two, we know the ratio. Step two of any stoichiometry is always the heart of the problem, your want over given coefficient ratio. We want to know sulfuric acid. Its coefficient is a one. So on the top, I'll put one mole of H2SO4. Our given was the NaOH. Its coefficient is a two. So I place two moles of NaOH. In the heart of my problem, what do I want over given? And in step three, you're going to divide by millimoles of want. So here, I'm just going to say one, and then underneath that, I'm going to put 125 milliliters of what we're trying to solve for, H2SO4. Step one, multiply molarity times mils of given. Step two, you ratio. In step two, the ratio is always want over given, where you're using the balanced equation for the mole values. And in step three, we're going to divide by the milliliters. I should put that better. Divide by milliliters of what we want. Millimole over milliliter gives us molarity. Let's hit it. 0.2 times 1 over 2, so times 1 half, and then times 1 over 125. This comes out 0 0.0008 molar, or perhaps your screen said 8 times 10 to the negative 4 molar units. That is the molarity of rainwater. In step one, we multiply molarity times mils of given. Step two, ratio want over given coefficients. Step three, divide by the volume of what you want to solve for. The three steps to stoichiometry. How about you try one on your own now? Try this one, pausing the video, come back when ready to check. What is the molarity of HCl and NaOH? Okay, so step one, I don't read numbers. Step one, I just want to write the equation. 
And what are we titrating with is a acid called hydrochloric against a base called sodium hydroxide. We know that it will neutralize forming a salt and water. We have a monoprotic acid and the base with one hydroxide unit, so we know that it's a one-to-one -one stoichiometric ratio. It tells us that we have 25.5 mils of a 0.24 molar sodium hydroxide solution. This is given. We'd like to know the molarity of the acid and 15 mils was used in the titration. We'd like to know the molarity of the acid. I call that our want to know. Alrighty, so how'd you do? Step one, you're going to take molarity times milliliters of what's given. So the first thing you did was take the 0.24 molar NaOH and you multiplied that by 25.5 mLs. And when you did so, you got millimoles of the base. In the next step, you set up your ratio, the heart of your problem. You want to know moles of HCl, so it goes on top, over moles of the base, NaOH. It's a nice one-to-one -one mole ratio. So step two is the heart of your problem. It's the want over given stoichiometric ratio. And in step three, you know to divide by the volume of want. So here I'm just gonna place one, and then under it is the 15 mils of the acid. Millimoles over milliliters will come out as molarity. 0.24 times 25.5 times one over one divided by 15, and does your screen say 0.408 molar? We should probably have two sig figs, so I'll say 0.41 molar units. That one wasn't too bad. Should we try another? You wanna pause, give yourself practice time? Come back, give yourself a little think time, come back when ready. Notice what I'm doing? I'm gonna ignore the numbers and I'm gonna write out my balanced equation first. We're titrating, oh, maybe I'll write my acid first. Sulfuric acid plus sodium hydroxide is going to neutralize. Now remember, when we swap partners, consider charges. Do not carry this two over there. It's not needed. H is a plus. OH is a minus, water is HOH. Water is not H2OH, that's wrong. Don't carry the two, consider charges. Because now the sodium, when hooked to sulfate, also requires the two, so balance the charges. And then when you think about product side, use the ionic charge to neutralize, then go back and balance. And we have did this one a little bit earlier. A one to two to two to one balances that equation. Now I can tabulate what I'm given. I have a two molar NaOH. I want to know volume. How many mils? Over here I have five mils of a six molar H2SO4 solution. So this is what I want to know. This is what I'm given. Alrighty. Let's go to work. We have a new target here. We want to know volume this time. Every other titration so far, we've been solving for molarity. So this is a little bit of a new type of problem where we have a different type of variable we're solving for. No biggie. All right, step one. We're going to take the molarity of what's given times its volume, and I'm just gonna keep it in a milliliter, and just remember that this is equivalent to a millimole. So you're going to take molarity times mil of what's given, step one. Step two is your heart of the problem, your want over given ratio. 
So we want to know NaOH. Its coefficient is a 2. We're given H2SO4. Its coefficient is a 1. So there's the heart of our problem, 2 over 1. Now what? Let's think about what we have going on here. We want to end with milliliters, not molarity. So instead of having, instead of dividing by uh, the, the, um, the milliliters, we're going to divide by molarity to find milliliters. And that's absolutely OK. Moles over molarity is your volume. If I put a millimole in, I'll get a milliliter out. But notice that the molarity is also on the bottom. So I'm just going to put 2 molar NaOH under a number 1, and that will pull out the molarity. We have millimole over, you know, set over molarity, and that will solve for us a milliliter. So here's our key sequence. 6 times 5 times 2 over 1 divided by 2. And my screen says 30 milliliters of acid. No, I'm sorry, of base, NaOH. That's what we want. It took 30 milliliters of sodium hydroxide to neutralize 5 mils of a 6 molar acid. Not too bad. Practice, practice, practice. Let's try another. What's the molarity of sulfuric acid given this number of base? OK, so again, I like to write my equation first, and I can tabulate the numbers next. I'm titrating sulfuric acid with sodium hydroxide. I know that HOH and Na2SO4 form. We've written this so many times. I hope that you're seeing it's just all based on ionic charge when I write out these formulas. And then to balance, we need the coefficients. It's going to require two moles of base to neutralize that diprotic acid. I want to know the molarity of this acid. If 18.5 mils of a 0.18 molar base was needed to neutralize 25 mils of the acid. So I like to write the balanced equation first and then just record under each ingredient what the values are. All right, yet another practice. Step one, you're going to take molarity times milliliters of what was given. And that's going to convert you into something called a millimole. 18.5 milliliters times 0.18 molar sodium hydroxide. That's me taking molarity times milliliters of given. What do we do next? We ratio. Think about the want over given stoichiometric ratio. We want to know sulfuric acid's molarity. Its coefficient is a 1. We're given the coefficients for sodium hydroxide as a 2. Our stoichiometric ratio, 1 half. Now what? The third step in stoichiometry, we're going to divide by the milliliters of want. And when we do so, that gives us the molarity of our solution. So I'm just going to set 25 mils of the acid under a 1 to know to divide. And that will give me molarity of the acid. 18.5 milliliters times 0.18 molar. Then I'll go times 1 half. Really, I'm just going to hit divide by 2. And then I'm going to hit times 1 over 25. But really, I'm just going to hit divided by 25. 
and I get 0 0.0666, and that's a pleasant number. We need uh, three sig figs. Oh, here we go. Point zero, well, that'd be two sig figs. So how about 0 0.067 molar units? Step one, multiply. Step two, ratio. Step three, divide. I've given you plenty of practices, haven't I? How about trying these two and come back when ready? All right, did you work ahead? You ready to check these out? Here we have acetic acid, CH3COOH. Remember that? Organic acid. Cool. Just to bring it back one more time, we're learning that that's called a carboxylic acid in organic chemistry. It's a functional group. COOH, where this guy is the ionizing proton, acetic acid. It's being neutralized by sodium hydroxide, our base. So that means when we ionize, the negative ion is acetate, and it's going to be neutralized there as the salt with sodium. And of course, the other product is our water, HOH. When acetic acid is neutralized by the base, it forms sodium acetate. That's the name of our salt and water. Okay, so that's fun. Here's what we had. We had a 0.1 molar NaOH, and we'd like to know how many milliliters. So this is what we want. We're given 10 mils of the acid and a 2.5 molar concentration. So this is what we want. This is what we are given. Step one, we're gonna multiply the molarity and the volume of what's given. Step two, we set up a ratio. We want to know the base, its coefficient is a one, given the mole of the acid, which is also a one. Now, we're going to divide by the other value, by the 0.1 molar solution. And when we do so, this will come out to be milliliters of our base. Step one, we multiply. Step two, we ratio. Step three, we divide. Three steps of stoichiometry. Shall we hit for a common answer? 2.5 times 10 divided by 0.1. And did you find 250 milliliters of NaOH? Yay! Let's read this one. Alrighty, so our looks like we're reacting sulfuric acid, H2SO4, with sodium hydroxide. So this is going to produce salt and water. So we have our water molecule and the salt we've learned is sodium sulfate, just based on charge. We've written this numerous times. There's our balanced equation. We want to know the volume of NaOH given its concentration as two molar. We're using eight mils of a 3.5 molar acid solution. So when I first tabulate, I write a balanced equation and I just bookkeep the volume and the molarity of each ingredient. Step one. And volume of given. Step two is our ratio. We want to know sodium hydroxide's volume. Its coefficient is a two. We were given the concentration and volume of sulfuric acid, so its coefficient goes on the bottom. Your want over given ratio. Step three, we're going to divide. We'll divide by two molar NaOH. And when we do so, we'll come out with the volume of NaOH. Step one, we multiply. Step two, we ratio. Step three, we divide. Always the steps of stoichiometry. Three and a half times eight times two over one divided by two. Notice that the guys just cancel, don't they? 
and you come up with 28 milliliters of solution. I'm going to pause the video here give you time to rest a little bit. We have one more to finish up, a lesson on buffers.